Lola Davier was born in the year 2010 in France. She was the daughter of Delphine and Johan Davier and had an older brother. The family lived on Menin Street, located in the 19th arrondissement of Paris, the capital of France. The site is on the banks of the River Seine and next to Parc de la Villette, the third largest park in Paris. As a highly visited tourist attraction, the 19th arrondissement has a significant number of guards who make daily rounds and is therefore considered one of the safest places in Paris. The place where Lola lived with her family was a more residential part. There were a fewer guards making the rounds, but even so, it was considered very safe. According to sources, both the girl's father and mother were employees of the building where they lived, in this case, concierges. On October 14, 2022, a Friday, Lola left home to go to her school, George Brassens, which is about 200 meters from where she lived. She spent the day normally at school, and at the end of the afternoon, she left for her house. As her parents were concierges, and the school was nearby, they used to see some students passing by on the sidewalk in front of the building, and that day was no different. But one thing worried them. Time was passing, and their daughter Lola didn't come home. As the minutes passed, this waiting became more and more agonizing. She had never gone anywhere else without asking her parents permission before, so the fact she took so long to get home put them on high alert. After an hour of waiting and Lola hadn't returned, her parents decided to notify the authorities. While the police were on their way, Lola's mother got the idea to look at the building security cameras to see if there was anything that could help. To everyone's surprise, the images showed that Lola had returned home within the normal hours, but she wasn't alone. In the images, you can also see that a woman aged 20 was accompanying her. According to a report from the neighbor, who also saw the footage, it seemed that the woman was making gestures calling Lola to get even closer to her, and it was possible to see that the girl was a little uncomfortable, as the woman seemed to be a little disturbed. They soon guessed that Lola had been forcibly taken by this woman. Delphine Davier, Lola's mother, made a publication on Facebook, warning about what had happened and describing in detail the appearance of the main suspect. In that publication, she wrote the following. Alert! Our daughter Lola was taken away. She was last seen at 3.20 p.m. in the company of a woman we don't know in our building. The woman wore white jeans, a white hooded sweater, and a gray backpack. Help us find him. Do not hesitate to call the Paris police or us. The police searched the neighborhood, and Delphine's post was quickly shared by thousands of people who became alert in the intention of helping to find the girl. At around 11.20 p.m., a woman was taking a walk when she saw a brown plastic suitcase, apparently abandoned in a courtyard near the building where Lola lived with her family. At this point, some information differs, as some sources say that the suitcase was found inside a dumpster, and others say that the suitcase was across the street from the building. Anyway, the woman who found the suitcase was curious to know what was inside, and decided to open it. Upon doing it, she came across a horrible scene. Lola's body was inside the suitcase. The police were called and quickly arrived at the scene. Lola was bound hand and foot. There was a deep wound in her neck. Her head was wrapped in tape, and her body was marked with the numbers 0 and 1. The body was taken for necropsy, which later revealed that the cause of death was due to mechanical arse suppression. The necropsy also revealed that the girl had been the victim of forced intercourse, but no male fluid was found on the body nor on the clothes. This indicated that either the person responsible had used protection or used some object. Once they learned what had happened to their daughter, Johan and Delphine were devastated. Soon, news of the crime spread throughout Paris and later, with the help of the media, throughout France. During the investigation, the police decided to check the building security camera once again and saw the same woman who accompanied Lola at the entrance to the building 
leaving carrying the same suitcase where her body was found. At that point, it became clear who the person responsible for the crime was. Later, after much effort, the police were able to identify her. She was Dabia Benkayert. Dabia is 24 years old and is originally from Algeria, a country located in North Africa. She migrated to France legally in the year 2016 with a student residence permit. Two years later, in 2018, she was the victim of domestic violence and filed a complaint against her partner for these assaults. On October 17, 2022, three days after the crime, the police located and arrested Dabia as the main suspect. With Dabia in custody, the police discovered that just over two months ago, authorities linked to the French government's immigration sector issued a document that was addressed to Dabia for her to leave the country as she no longer had a residence permit. As Dabia had no criminal record, she was not placed in a pre-trial detention center, but was given 30 days to return to Algeria. The police also discovered that Dabia currently had no job and no home. She was considered homeless, as she spent most of her time sleeping and living on the street. From time to time, she would spend time at an acquaintance's house, and sometimes at her older sister's apartment, which is in the same building where Lola's family lives and works. Based on this information, the police decided to call Dabia's sister, a woman named Friha, to provide clarification. In testimony, the woman told the police that Dabia had been showing some kind of mental problem in recent months, but that she didn't know how to help her sister. According to her, one night when Dabia was sleeping in her apartment, she woke up out of nowhere and started talking a lot of nonsense. During Dabia's interrogation, the police realized that in fact the woman had some kind of mental problem. Asked if she was responsible for the crime, Dabia said yes without thinking twice and even told in detail everything she had done. According to her, she found Lola while the girl was returning from school to the building where she lived and convinced her to go with her to her sister's apartment, which is in that same building. Dabia didn't make very clear how she managed to convince Lola, but the most likely hypothesis is that of a threat, since in the security footage that recorded the two entering the building together, it is possible to see that the girl is a little uncomfortable with the situation. When they entered the apartment, Dabia forced Lola to take a shower and then forced relations with her. Finally, the woman put Lola inside the suitcase and wrote the numbers 0 and 1 on her body. The police were shocked by everything they heard from Dabia and asked her what the motivation for the crime would be. According to Dabia, a week before the crime, she would have argued with Delphine Davier, Lola's mother, as she wanted to be able to enter and leave the building whenever she wanted as if she was a resident, since her sister lived there. However, Delphine wouldn't have allowed it, as Dabia was not a registered resident of the building and this was against local regulations. With that, Dabia would have been furious and began to think of a way to get revenge. That's when she found Lola returning to the building alone and saw an opportunity there. According to sources, Dabia's sister was not in the apartment at the time she committed the crime which made it easier for her to do what she did and still leave the place without arousing suspicion, as recorded by the building's security cameras. Witnesses even reported that they saw the moment the woman left the building with a large, heavy suitcase and that outside the building, she even asked for some people to help her with the suitcase. Also according to these witnesses, Dabia would have left her suitcase in front of an establishment and then entered the place where she bought a croissant and a coffee. Then, she returned outside and picked up the suitcase again. I haven't found information on where Lola's parents were when the girl returned from school with Dabia. Although she confessed to the entire crime during her statement to the police and even said it why, at her first custody hearing, Dabia withdrew her confession and said that what she had told the police was just a dream she had, which none of it was real. She further stated that she would never be able to take a person's life. Confronted with all the evidence the police had against her, Dabia broke the conversation and said that an armed man was the one who committed the crime. Then, she said that it was a ghost and that she even fought against it to try to avoid the crime. In a note, 
The Paris police said that Dabia didn't show any emotion during the entire moment of her testimony. They said that when shown photos of Lola's body, the woman simply looked at it and said that it made her feel neither hot nor cold, stating that she had no regrets for what she had done. She also added that she also suffered violence in the past and that she saw her parents lose their lives right before her eyes. Police still don't know if these allegations by Dabia about her past are in fact true, but they continue to investigate everything about the woman to gather as much information as possible. About her having mental problems, the authorities said that the woman actually exhibits abnormal behavior, but that they can only know after she undergoes some mental evaluation. Anyway, the authorities tried to find out if she had already been to a mental health hospital or even if she had been to a psychiatrist before, but no record was found. Later, new witnesses came forward to the Paris police, stating that on the day Dabia was carrying the suitcase with the body, she stopped a man on the street and offered a lot of money for him to help her take the suitcase to another location. Suspicious, the man would have asked what was in the suitcase, and Dabia would have replied that she worked with the sale of organs, and that she earned a lot of money from it, and that if he helped her, she would give him part of that money. The man then, half scared, turned his back on the woman and walked away. The police even investigated these issues of the sale of organs, but by all indications, it was just Dabia's delusion. Later, in addition to Dabia, another five people were arrested suspected of having participated in the crime. One of them was Dabia's sister, who was initially suspected of being involved in the crime, since everything happened in her apartment, but soon the police conclude that she didn't know anything and she was released. Another suspect is a 43-year-old man whose identity has not been released. He was accused of helping Dabia transport the body and helping her hide it. As far as is known, he remains in custody while the police complete their investigation. The other prisoners, however, were released for lack of evidence and also didn't have their identities disclosed. Currently, Dabia Ben Kayard is in prison in Fresne Prison in Val de Marne, where she awaits her fate. In an interview, Alexandra Silva, her lawyer, asked the media to stop spreading rumors about her client and stated that she is supposedly innocent. The funeral and burial of Lola Davier took place on October 24th in the city of Lillers, northern France. The farewell ceremony was marked by sadness and revolt and was attended by thousands of people from all corners of the country. The girl's family remained reserved and only asked that they be respected at this very painful time. Lola Davies' case is undoubtedly one of the worst and most repercussions in all of France in recent years. Due to the author of the crime being an illegal Albanian immigrant, many French people began to question the effectiveness of the sector responsible for immigration in the country, something that has been questioned for some time. For many, if Tabia had been sent back to Algeria as soon as she was first arrested for having an expired residence permit, Lola would be alive today. In any case, because of the crime, many French people are afraid and now avoid letting the young children walk the streets alone. Well guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end, best wishes and I see you next time.